Um, I'm here with Maswami Jacob, writer. She has um, written numerous poems, published collections of poetry, and she's also written a novel, uh, Zorami, which is which has been quite well received across universities and academic um, environments. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we're very happy that you're able to spare some time with us today. Uh, now, as you are aware, our Department, the Department of English in Mizoram University, is uh, you know working on this project about identity and um, identity of Mizo people, as also other tribes that are somehow connected with the Zo tribes um, from via literature, if you will. And uh, so, before we start talking about your particular work, maybe you could just lead us uh, with a, a conversation on, you know, this whole thing about literature, Mizo literature. Because as far as uh, the written script is concerned, we have we are well aware that we haven't really had a written script for too long. So when we talk about literature in the context of the Mizo, it has to be uh, keeping in mind orality, the oral literature and that sort of thing. So as a writer and as a as a creative person, um, how do you think this whole this this whole background of orality that we have, this this oral literature, the folk tales, the folklores, how has that shaped our creativity and how has it impacted it? Or do you think that this is something that is quite removed from our present literary scenario? Oh, okay. As we all know, we have been literate oh, only for a short while, a little over a hundred years. So uh, I think the oral literature, including our myths, our folk tales, and all those folklore, uh, they play a, a very important part in our, mm -hmm. in our literature, in our culture. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to uh, really relook at some of our myths and our folklore to understand our culture better because yeah, uh, uh, we have been literate for such a short time. So we, we do need to uh, mm -hmm. go back and look at those, I think. Absolutely. Now, when you talk about <coughs> re-looking, uh, what exactly do you mean? Um, like, uh, maybe we can have a, um, you know, we can look at them with fresh eyes because uh, sometimes we regard these old things as just old things and mm -hmm. keep them there. But uh, they deserve a, a lot of uh, better study. Uh, let's see. Let's let's take the folk tales, Simta Drota, for mm -hmm. example. Now we we uh, we seem to treat them like um, it's some funny tale for kids, but just have a close look at it. You have this story starting with the Kai Kuang doing some mischief, and the uh, and the uh, Simta Drota out of his anger uh, cut off the Kaum stand and 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 so on. Mm -hmm. So we see this uh, chain of. Uh, uh, anger and pain and suffering passed on like a long chain. So uh, just it, it's not just about you know it's not just a funny tale. It mm -hmm. it, it tells a lot of uh, it, it carries a good philosophy. You know it 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 is a study of life. This is what really happens mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. And then uh, take the story of Tsung Leng and Tsung Leng Let Nui Leng Indo. You know the war between the birds and the animals. It started off with uh, the big snake asking the little tortoise mm -hmm. to guard her eggs, and this uh, the the mischievous deer comes and um, uh, and uh, challenges the tortoise to jump mm -hmm. over the eggs, mm -hmm. and then the you know the the silly tortoise does it and breaks the eggs. So and then he runs away and the eagle uh, decides to you know save and it broke out into a big war mm -hmm. um, and uh, it ended up with the snake with the big snake being killed even though the big snake was the one who was wrong first mm -hmm. you know it, right. it suffered mm -hmm. so it's so much of uh, so much of deep philosophy of life mm -hmm. and it is not like the Aesop's fables which okay. which show the moral of the story mm -hmm. but it understands life so much mm -hmm. this is so realistic mm -hmm. in a sense right, right? right and then um, 
you have, um, say, Maoruangi story. Mm. I mean, just uh, sticking with right. the, right. the folktales, mm -hmm. Maoruangi story. It's um, something like Cinderella in a sense, mm. the, the, the poor orphan girl being harassed by the stepmother. But uh, I would say that Maoruangi has more depth, more character, How's and more that? poetry in it than, okay. the, than the Cinderella right. story. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, uh, both the stories end with being married to, you know, making good marriages and mm -hmm. uh, escaping from the suffering. So it teaches us that, okay, there are times when you do uh, uh, sufferings end mm -hmm. in a happy in a mm. happy note. Mm -hmm. And then take the story of Leandova, it really fascinates me. Mm. Uh, there's, a, there's two orphans who are being uh, you know, persecuted by mm -hmm. everybody, but uh, it also tells about the loyalty and the love between the brothers. You know, twice the mm -hmm. younger brother was very foolish and he was mm -hmm. quite a liability for, mm -hmm. uh, for the elder brother. Mm -hmm. But um, the brother keeps taking care of him, mm -hmm. and then they stick together. Right. And uh, and uh, at times when Liandawa was in despair about people persecuting them, it was twice Yala who cheered him up, mm -hmm. you know. And then uh, they they came to that treasure in the snakes, uh, in the python's mm -hmm. stomach because of. Twaisiala's optimism, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So it it uh, and then uh, when Lercia came into the picture, mm -hmm. the brothers showed their their real character, their mm -hmm. their kindness, mm -hmm. even though they had uh, suffered so much cruelty from the society. And then uh, eventually, kindness is uh, rewarded right. in in an unexpected way. You know, mm -hmm. it goes on. Right. There's so much of depth, so mm -hmm. much of character, so much of wisdom. Mm -hmm. In this, in That's these right. tales, you know, right. so many of our tales are like that. We mm -hmm. can uh, actually mm -hmm. uh, restudy them, mm -hmm. and there's so much mm -hmm. to learn from them. And I'm sure it, the, these stories also reflect a lot of our uh, the way that our community is structured, the social structure, the kind of values and mm -hmm. and uh, um, you know uh, norms that are encouraged yeah. uh, in the Mizo community. Yeah. Do you think uh, these values? And ethos that were reflected in these folk tales, uh, would you say that they're still relevant today? Yeah, they are definitely still relevant, mm. and uh, they still have a lot, a lot to offer even mm. now. You know, okay. in only if we care to study them mm -hmm. uh, carefully mm -hmm. and not just call them, you know, not more light till right. and you know, just right. leaving them, mm -hmm. uh, just leaving them there. Absolutely. Um, okay, we have uh, spent quite a bit of time talking about the folklore, but I'd just like to add one thing. Uh, this myth about the dead people. And I'm so fascinated with this story, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, why people, uh, Redil was considered to be the way uh, where the spirits pass through on their way to the Mithikwa or the world of the dead. And the reason why, you know, the story around why they started thinking it so. Mm -hmm. And then also the journey of the of the spirits uh, through uh, where they find the uh, Hoi Lo Par and mm -hmm. Lung Lo Tui and all mm -hmm. that, and we even get to see um, the the actual world where the dead people live through the story of Tlingi and Ngama and all that. No, this whole thing is so imaginative and so creative. I mm -hmm. just, I just love them. You know, mm -hmm. they were really, uh, really, really good um, storytellers mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. story makers. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we can beat them as yet, even yeah. now. Yeah, that's true. So that's it's true. Uh, you, you can't just show all this as you know, more light till mm -hmm. that kind of thing. That's they true. were not mall. Uh, mm -hmm. Our ancestors were not mall. Mm -hmm. uh, they were very creative, they mm -hmm. were very wise mm -hmm. um, and um, they were also quite cunning when they wanted to be <laughs> okay. and very very brave mm -hmm. like Lal Terry we talked about her mm -hmm. and so we had all this mm -hmm. and uh, many of this we could, uh, they deserve to be you know studied mm -hmm. closer and mm -hmm. you know in this time. Yeah, that's what I just okay, wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, There's absolutely. a lot more we could say about mm -hmm. the folklore, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. On a more personal note, um, how did you, how how did you get acquainted with these stories? Were, were these stories that 
you know, you heard as a youngster? Did you read about them later on? Um, actually, um, it was really, really fortunate. Mm. When I started uh, going to school, we happened to be in Mizoram. Okay. Um, I was um, yeah, from nursery up to class two. I studied. Okay. Then when I was about eight years, we left Mizoram. Right. But during those few years, mm -hmm. uh, studying in the LP school, right. uh, Mizo Titi and Mizo, Mizo Thuvon and all mm -hmm. that from that, uh, I think I just fell in love. Within those few years, I really fell in love with the uh, Mizo folk mm -hmm. uh, lore and right. uh, poetry and all that. Right. Right. Yeah, that's how it happened. Yeah. And then, of course, later on, mm -hmm. because... I find it so fascinating. I mm -hmm. read up wherever possible and okay. uh, keep on adding as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back to <coughs> what we were saying about your writing. Uh, do these things come through, you know, as, as a writer, as, you know, as far as your identity as a writer uh, is concerned, these inf the, do these uh, stories and folklore, do they influence your writing? Do they shape your thinking? Do they come through in the stories that you tell, do you think? Um, yeah, I should say they do influence me. Like uh, many of my poems, uh, both in Mizo and English, mm -hmm. they do deal with some of these things, like, you know, uh, even uh, the stories we had, like, uh, in ancient times, you used to have script, but mm. it was stolen. It mm. was uh, taken away by a dog, dog because it was on leather and mm. all these things. All the even all these come out, uh, even in my English poems, not okay. not uh, not just the major right. ones. Right. And they do uh, shape my thinking to mm -hmm. a great extent. I think because uh, something you really love, you know, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. do affect you yes. know, what you do, what you write. Right. Right. So I think they. And uh, in my novel, uh, they, they, uh, I've made use of many of this. Oh, really? Uh, Maybe we can come back to that a little later. <coughs> okay. uh, but right now, I just wanted to ask you, you talked about um, leaving Mizoram at quite a young age. Uh, so in your personal journey, you know, as, um, as somebody who has lived both in Mizoram and outside of Mizoram, um, how do you um, how do you see your identity? You know how do you shape your identity? Uh, see, because I'll just expand a little bit. Um, uh, being within Mizoram and outside of Mizoram, I'm sure has had you know its own impact on you. And uh, there are people who say that you know if you don't live within your own place, you know your own homeland, home, you know. Um, that you you start losing your identity, you start losing your roots and that sort of thing. But on the other hand, you know there's this there's this idea that you know you become more even more sure of who you are once you leave you know your your roots. So uh, as an individual and as a writer, uh, how much of the of your move your your stay? I think you have stayed also even as an adult outside of Mizoram quite a bit. Uh, so would you like to comment Mostly on that? In fact, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think uh, I must be one of those, the second that I became mm -hmm. quite sure of my identity in okay. a sense. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, growing up outside mm -hmm. Mizoram, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we wo we grew up very much in the Mizo society okay. because we all, you know, in Shillong and uh, we always had that. Mizo community. Mm -hmm. So I never really left the Mizo community. Mm -hmm. And in another sense, yeah, the fact that um, I'd started my education mm -hmm. in, in Mizoram mm -hmm. and I had, you know, fallen in love with all this mm -hmm. Mizo folklore and all, it, uh, it sort of uh, made me very sure of my identity as a Mizo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, my father was another person who always uh, uh, wanted to emphasize mm -hmm. that we were Mizos mm -hmm. and even in the language. Mm -hmm. Like uh, those of us who are uh, some of our friends mm -hmm. who didn't have that kind of uh, uh, rooting maybe, right, right. they sort of um, 
half forgot the Mizo language, mm-hmm. and some of them even said, "I don't know me to read Mizo." Yes, you know, in English, mm-hmm. uh, being go, attending English mm-hmm. medium schools and all that. Mm-hmm. But I never had that. Right. I all I was always very much a Mizo right mm-hmm. at heart. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I think it does affect yeah, my mm-hmm. writing and all that. I as see. You said, yeah. I see. Uh, you must be quite an avid reader. Uh, I'm sure you are because uh, you have this background in literature as well. Um, in general, what do you think of uh, Mizo literature? I mean, that's a very vast question, I know, but uh, for whatever you have been reading, uh, in terms of especially creative pieces, the Contemporary scenario, for example, what do you think of uh, Mizo writing? Hmm. <laughs> not satisfactory, is what I say. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> like, um, I see um, a few of the novels that I've read. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they're okay. They're good. They're uh, they make good reading, interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But somehow, uh, I'm always dissatisfied with the kind of world view that they. Okay. <laughs> that they right, give. Right. Uh, I don't quite know how to explain it very mm-hmm. properly, but it's not. Uh, it's not uh, mature worldview. I mean, mm-hmm. the few that I've read, I'm, right. I'm, I'm. I'm not saying that I read a lot okay. of Mizo literature because uh-huh. uh, I do more of English okay. uh, in in terms of reading. Okay. So I think we have a long way to go. Mm-hmm. I see. In terms of. Right, right. In terms of worldview in terms of uh, maturity, mm-hmm. even in terms of style, I mm-hmm. think we have a long, long way to go in general. Okay. Uh, as a writer, <coughs> what are you most comfortable, which language are you most comfortable writing in? Actually, in terms of writing, I'm, I think I'm more comfortable with English. Okay. Even though I do write quite a bit of Mizo poems and mm-hmm. I enjoy doing that. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> when it comes to writing po- prose, mm-hmm. I do stumble a lot when okay. I try. Okay. Maybe because of the lack of practice, mm-hmm. because I've been writing more in right. English, so it comes easier right. and more natural. And also the fact that most of us, uh, you know, education was done in mm-hmm. uh, in English, right. that helped, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd <coughs> like to talk a little bit about Zora May. Uh, the novel that um, you have. This was published in 2015. 2015 that's right. And uh, Zoromi talks about um, a time in Mizo history that, you know, is uh, was quite, you know, um, exciting and tragic at the same time. Um, you know, my question to you, I think, is, uh, you know, on the one hand, you, it's, it's great that um, a lot of writers from this region, not just Mizoram, but from this region, have been addressing these issues that nobody talked about, nobody wrote about. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, that's that. But on the other hand, if you look at the larger picture of um, write, uh, you know, Indian writing in English, especially now, there's a lot of focus on the Northeast literature from the Northeast, again, which is great news. But um, <coughs> in the midst of all this, do you think that um, the Northeast writer is burdened with the, you know, with the task of presenting history or representing history? In other words, do you feel that you are confined to writing about these particular aspects, or do you think that there is scope for other areas and issues as well. I mean, what I, I would just love to know your thoughts on this. Uh, well, writing Zoram was purely a personal choice. Right. Because uh, <clears throat> all through those uh, Ramboy times, mm-hmm. you know, we were outside. Right. But uh, living in the Mizu society, we hear a lot about mm-hmm. what happens there, you know, the mm-hmm. atrocities, mm-hmm. the burnings and all those things happening. Mm-hmm. So. You sort of grew up with it, right. with with all those stories. So it's in you, mm-hmm. and you are pained. Mm-hmm. You know when the Ramboy started. I think that was a time uh, we were in Imphal, okay. and my dad was so disturbed all all through the night. He talked in his mm-hmm. sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so it uh, you know it had a lot of impact on us, even though we were outside and mm-hmm. we didn't uh, suffer it firsthand. Mm-hmm. But it was very much there, mm-hmm. and then. Yeah, we grew up with that knowledge, uh, not that I knew what to do with it at mm-hmm. that time. Mm-hmm. But uh, <clears throat> around 
2002-2003 and all that, we were in Guwahati mm -hmm. and at that time I used to write in the papers, I, I called myself a freelance journalist mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. sort of wrote feature articles and mm -hmm. all that. <clears throat> and uh, around that time, uh, people would newspaper writers and all would refer to Mizoram because the peace accord had been signed. They would call it an island of peace, you know, mm -hmm. turbulent sea and all that. Mm -hmm. So that set me thinking, um, okay, uh, we have political peace now, mm -hmm. but what about all that we suffered, you know, because we, we grew up so much with all those sufferings right. and, uh, and terrible things happening. Mm -hmm. So how do we cope with it now? Mm -hmm. Uh, especially emotionally, so mm -hmm. that question came mm -hmm. into my head. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> in 2004, the month of May, I think, just before we moved to Bangalore, mm -hmm. I went to Missouri okay. uh, to do a research on, on this. Mm -hmm. So I talked to a lot of people. I went to this uh, Kohar Inn, you know, where mm -hmm. people sat together and mm -hmm. I just shot the question. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I, I interviewed a lot of uh, individuals also like Pungur Ava mm -hmm. who was uh, responsible for the starting mm -hmm. of the peace talk, uh, James Dokuma and mm -hmm. many other characters mm -hmm. I interviewed at length. Okay. And then yeah, I went to Lungle also mm -hmm. and did the same. So I, I listened to the stories of, of a lot and a lot mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. And what I found out was apart from finding out a lot more facts mm -hmm. about the things that happened at the time, um, uh, what I found was we were still hurting. Mm. We were still terribly hurting inside, even though outside it, it seemed okay, mm -hmm. you know, progressing economically and all those things mm -hmm. happened. But inside people were still hurting. So uh, I, uh, the idea of that, um, writing that novel mm -hmm. based on that mm -hmm. and uh, search of a healing mm -hmm. uh, for the insight, for the psyche mm -hmm. came and then uh, I don't know exactly how it started, the character, mm -hmm. the protagonist mm -hmm. Zora Mi, mm -hmm. uh, she just, she pretty much just appeared to me from somewhere, I don't right. know. Mm -hmm. So the whole concept of uh, writing her life mm -hmm. and looking at uh, all those things mm -hmm. through her eyes mm -hmm. and her memory mm -hmm. uh, came to me and also in a certain way she being a representative of mm -hmm. Mizoram mm -hmm. you know a figure that stands for mm -hmm. all that it just appeared from somewhere right, <laughs> I don't know right. and the beginning <clears throat> starting with the morning of her birthday right. and the story ending at midnight of mm -hmm. the same day that concept and mm -hmm. in the in the middle putting up, up uh, you know, uh, putting all those other things in. Mm -hmm. It just came to me like that. Okay. But uh, writing it was very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, as I went and did my research, met people, uh, recorded their voices, I came back home and uh, tried, to, tried to start writing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it hurt me so much. Mm -hmm. I, I was still crying inside when I listened to mm -hmm. this. So I couldn't quite tackle it, wrote a bit. So it started right in 2004, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, wrote a bit and then uh, couldn't bear it anymore mm -hmm. and put it aside. It went on like that, mm -hmm. bit by bit, bit by bit. Okay. Uh, after we moved to Mumbai also, again, uh, wrote a little bit and then it went. Then in 2000, at the end of 2012, we left Mumbai and came back here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy, my publisher, George Cora, uh, he, he had started his publishing house uh, maybe several years back. So one day he, he told me, uh, come, let's, let's do a book on Mizoram. Mm -hmm. Let's do a coffee table book, he mm -hmm. said. So I sort of uh, said, okay, and started writing a little bit, the coffee book, mm -hmm. uh, uh, tab uh, coffee table book kind mm -hmm. of thing. But uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> then this, heart uh, was not this novel it. just mm -hmm. came back to me and mm -hmm. I told him, see I have this no uh, novel in my heart, mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't been able to bring it out. Mm -hmm. Then he said, okay, let's do it then. 
and if you are really, really willing to work with me, he thought I might try and jump off to some yeah. other publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll, um, I'll hire an editor for you. Mm -hmm. Then you can work together. I said, right. okay, fine. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to work with you. Mm -hmm. Then uh, he uh, he got this editor, A.V., you know, it, his name is written in there, that uh, Ampat okay. uh, uh, Vagis. He's, mm -hmm. he's a very, very good uh, guy in terms of literature. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So uh, we worked together. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, I was working at um, this St. Claret College again. Mm -hmm. But after some time, uh, you know, I found that it was not uh, not really possible to work at this and do the college teaching. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they they asked me to work full time. I was working part time, mm -hmm. uh, and I said I'm willing to work only part time. But mm -hmm. they needed a full time, so I had mm -hmm. to leave. Mm -hmm. So writing late into the night and this guy helped me. Mm -hmm. So finally, in about two years, mm -hmm. it got finished and yes. managed to publish yes. it. I know. You did a very me. wonderful job with it. Uh, but, you know, um, coming back to what we were saying earlier, um, it's, a, it's a huge responsibility to be, you know, able to represent at least a little bit of the Mizo history, you know, in your writing. Writing, for that matter, is a very powerful tool. But, you know, as they say, with a lot of power comes great responsibility. And especially, I think, so for the, the, the Northeast writer, who is in many ways representative of what his people or her people are going through at a particular point in time. So uh, what do you think of, you know, as, as you were, re, you know, recounting and, and telling Zorami's story, for instance, um, did you feel very responsible about um, how you presented or represented her and what she was going through and what the Mizo people were going through and how did you deal with, how did you manage to, you know, find that balance between the kind of um, emotional investment that you had in the story but also that, that you know, that fairness or that attempt at fairness? Uh, yeah, it... Uh you do feel res responsible. Mm -hmm. You are very afraid of, uh, especially since you are writing uh, some history mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing. You feel you, you are very afraid of misrepresenting mm -hmm. anything. Right. So I did my best, I should say. And then, yeah, in the earlier parts, uh, talks a lot about the army atrocities on our people. Mm -hmm. And but on the other hand, we have to be fair mm -hmm. and also admit that. Uh, the underground uh, MNF was also very cruel on mm -hmm. our people. You know, mm -hmm. I tried to balance that out mm -hmm. uh, and be truthful mm -hmm. uh, because uh, yeah, I had done uh, through that research. Mm -hmm. I had got uh, a lot of a lot of things, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things I didn't know before, mm -hmm. uh, especially about the underground atrocities on our mm -hmm. own people. Mm -hmm. So those also had to be brought out right, right. and. Uh, and also, you are, uh, um, of course, while writing, I didn't think much about this, mm -hmm. but later on, uh, through people's remarks and all, uh, how important it is to have your facts right mm -hmm. and not uh, misrepresent things and not, uh, mm, not try to um, over over blame one right. party and try to right. justify mm -hmm. the crimes of another. Mm -hmm. I, I did try that. Right. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as part of your literary <coughs> technique, uh, you mentioned that you also brought in your folk influences oh. in the narration of this particular tale. Can you expand on that a little bit? Um, yeah, like, um, you know, I wanted uh, through this book, mm -hmm. it's the it's the only novel I've written mm -hmm. and about my people. So I wanted to uh, showcase a lot more about uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mizo culture mm -hmm. as well as yeah, uh, folk things also. Mm -hmm. Actually, somebody uh, criticized it and said, you packed too, 
uh, you tried to do too much with one novel. <laughs> right. This could have been uh, through, uh, made into at least three novels, <laughs> you know. Right. So maybe it was a bit too pat. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, I did bring in, like uh, I said, I brought in Jim Tatrota's story. Okay. Uh, that was as one of the stories that grandma told mm -hmm. Zora, me and her brother when they mm -hmm. were kids and all that. But uh, they do. Um, they are quite relevant to what happens okay. in, in this story. Mm -hmm. In the sense, you know, there's a lot of innocent people suffering mm -hmm. through the work of mm -hmm. this thing and then also the suffering being, you know, carried on, mm -hmm. carried on and all this. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, yeah, I dealt with Sung Leng and Thuai Leng and right. all that also. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So all, all this, uh, they, they do have a a bearing on the mm -hmm. on the plot right. in a certain way, right. and not only that, I even dealt with um, the coming of the missionaries, mm -hmm. uh, the first mi uh, missionaries. Nowadays, you know, it's become uh, it seems to have become quite fashionable mm -hmm. to uh, to accuse the Western missionaries mm -hmm. of having sabotaged the culture right. somehow, mm -hmm. but. Uh, it, uh, yeah, there may be certain ways in which mm -hmm. it was done, but uh, they did whatever they thought was the best for us. You mm -hmm. know, they after all they gave mm -hmm. us letters, they gave us education, mm -hmm. they gave us whatever health care we have, mm -hmm. and all that. So I think uh, I try to put them also in a balance, okay. you know, in a in a balanced way, uh, because uh, <clears throat> yeah, they nowadays people talk about them. Uh, bringing in those uh, English, the English, the hymns translated from English mm -hmm. into Mizo in a very stiff language, mm -hmm. prosaic language, and mm -hmm. all that, and also about uh, having banned the drum for some time mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, maybe there are things perhaps mm -hmm. which could have been done better. We don't know, mm -hmm. but at the time, and we can't forget that we owe them. Mm -hmm so much mm -hmm. and also uh, I don't think they deliberately did anything to to sort of undermine our culture mm -hmm. because if you read some of the songs you know like uh, I think the other day I read I can't remember uh, which was Pubuanga's uh, song or something yeah. which said Mizo Mizo Lomro it is such a blessing to be a Mizo, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think they did, they did it deliberately, at least the first missionaries, mm -hmm. I don't think they, they deliberately did anything to cut down a culture. Mm -hmm. But maybe uh, certain things like use of the drum, it was mm -hmm. so much used for, you know, that Zukun right. dance kind of thing. Maybe mm -hmm. they felt mm -hmm. it was needed, mm -hmm. you know, at that time. Right. And of course, uh, after several years, we brought it right back and mm -hmm. uh, with good effects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, yeah. You know, you talked about your 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 life outside of Mizoram and, and the fact that it has helped you immensely as a writer by giving you a, a wider perspective and more objectivity and, you know, all of that. Uh, is there a flip side? So living outside of uh, Mizoram, and does that also come through in your writings as well? You mm -hmm. know, as a woman, as a Mizo woman, as somebody from the Northeast, uh, living in you know another part of the country, being married to somebody from another part of the country, uh, who, uh, you know, apart from the objectivity and, and and all of that that you have shared, which I, mm -hmm. you know, agree with. Um, maybe uh, is there another side to it, as I said, you know, and does that come through in your writings? Yeah. Yeah, it does bring you to a lot of funny situations, mm -hmm. which, yeah, it, like my poem mm -hmm. should tell something about that. Okay. It's uh, Identities, is a title. <clears throat> Identities. Where are you from, you ask? Not my name, not who I am, but what root or shoot I sprung from. So I'll tell you. I came from the earth you walk on, carries you, nourishes you. In case you've forgotten, we both are made out of mud, molded by the same hand, 
warmed by the same sun, both breathing air watered by rain, fed by earth's produce. Perhaps at dawn of history, the sisters, your ancestor and mine, parted ways and traveled different directions. Yours stopped on the flat land. Mine climbed up the hills and over ages we developed different lifestyles and tastes. So now I've come from the misty hills where rhododendrons and orchids bloom, bearing cool fresh air, magical law, and you from palm tree land by the sea give me such strange looks like I don't belong to the same earth. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Uh, just one last question. Are you a woman first, or a missile first, or a writer first? I think I'd like to say I'm a human first. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, then right. I don't know how to. Uh, the other orders would come mm -hmm. de depending on the time and mood, right. I suppose. <laughs> okay. I'm just a human first. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Bima Swami Jacob Pian English to all of in Mizor Trungpo in Tule Lahi. As you have said, I'm a trend to publish a trend to publish them. Low she the pony meet here. Don't I have a Mizor poem there? Means here, Sagdona. Gan <laughs> ตัวอีหลงนะอันนี้เอ็มอันนี้กะริงเนี่ยตัดเมียจวังซวนอีหลาปัดนี้เวไลปัดทุมไลกะผัวตอเปหมวกิจงจางอะเฮียนกะกะ
people got offended with women a lot easier than do with men i think okay. in general okay because yeah uh, my so is that in the past tense or in the present tense uh, when you both. say okay <laughs> both mm -hmm. then and now all right like uh, something a man does with mm -hmm. impunity you know if a woman does it becomes a crime mm -hmm. it, it's still true even in our society mm -hmm. it's still true mm -hmm. uh, a man gets drunk and people just just laugh if they see a woman drunk you know that's right. what happens right. so yeah, yeah as a woman also as a writer mm -hmm. uh, you know all through the ages mm. uh, writers have been uh, what do you call it subversive mm -hmm. in many ways mm -hmm. so as a song stress mm -hmm. she may have criticized mm -hmm. the uh, the practices of the society mm -hmm. so you know right. she could have right. offended mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that may have been saying that she has composed too many poems maybe just just an excuse you know? right 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 do you think uh, in you know in contemporary times writers are given a lot of freedom in Mizo society? Mm, I don't know. To some extent, I think they are free, but mm -hmm. um, so long as you don't offend them. <laughs> right, right. See, <laughs> them, you know, yes. them are, are always are very frightening. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. Uh, do you think perhaps this is why for such a long time, for instance, you know, coming back to your novel and the kind of issues that you touched upon the historical events and all of that, do you think part of the reason why nobody spoke or wrote about those things for such a long time is because of that kind of, you know, censorship? It could be censorship and censorship also... Censorship in the sense uh, yeah. of, you know, not a legal one, but, uh, yeah. you know... Yeah, but uh, in the case of uh, the, the Ramboy, mm -hmm. this thing, I think it may chiefly be that people are finding it really, really difficult to come up with the stories. Right. So mm -hmm. that could be one reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I think you do have uh, several uh, novels mm -hmm. dealing with this, don't you, in Mizo? Oh, yes, Only now, that yes. People haven't, or it's, after, it's recent, after right? After quite yeah. a while, yes. Yeah. Um, novels and also uh, non-fictional mm writings, memoirs, so to speak, which have come up, you know, mm. quite recently actually. Not a lot of people yeah. spoke about this. Uh, okay, and another factor would be, see, the atrocities mm -hmm. that we suffered from the army, from the Indian army. Mm -hmm. It was more or less easy to speak mm -hmm. about it within the Mizo community. Right. But what about the atrocities committed by the Mizo guys? That may not have been very, mm -hmm. uh, very easy to speak out. Right. I think, yeah, right. yeah. I right. think you're right there. Mm -hmm. So maybe only now they are beginning to dare mm -hmm. to come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> as a writer, you are, you know, you've you've been labeled uh, a miso writer, obviously, uh, but. Beyond that, you know, how do you see yourself as a writer, you know, in terms of your identity, in terms of the, the kind of, we had talked about this earlier as well, but that representational um, aspect of your writing is something that comes out very strongly, as it does with other Northeast writers, I think, as well. You know, they are, people are labeled Kasi writers, Naga writers, Manipuri writers, and Mizo writers, and all of that. So, you know, in, in effect, you are almost touted as being representatives of your tribe. Uh, but you are also an individual writer. How do you balance that? How do you see your identity as a writer? Yeah, a, um, an artist has to be free. Without freedom, you can't uh, do anything really creative, you know? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm a miso writer, I don't deny that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have no problem with that label, mm -hmm. but um, I don't want to be kind of stereotyped. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be made, I don't want to be pressurized mm -hmm. into writing only about Mizo life or right. Mizo stories mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'll write whatever, uh, uh, whatever creative inspiration comes, mm -hmm. I'll write. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Actually, um, recently I submitted a story for Muse India. It hasn't come out yet. Mm -hmm. um, a short story. Somebody asked me to write a short story, one of the editors. So I wrote it based in Kerala. All right. Kerala, mm -hmm. sort of olden days. Right. So, you know, what, what you see, you write what you see, what you imagine, what comes to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I should not be pressurized into writing <laughs> only about that's you right. know mm -hmm. what is Mizo or what mm -hmm. is Northeast. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's right. Even though I do have uh, quite a few stories about uh, uh, based in Guwahati, Assam, okay. because we live there, right, right. you know, uh, and we, I've seen mm -hmm. quite a bit of Kerala life mm -hmm. because we go there, my husband mm -hmm. being from there. Mm -hmm. So I, I have every right to write, <laughs> yes. you know. After all, you are the sum total of your experiences, right? I know, yeah. Experiences, yeah, right? it wouldn't be fair to. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know, uh, one mm -hmm. interesting thing, uh, when I was writing Zora Me, mm -hmm. My editor, he has an acquaintance, uh, somebody in the U.S. who mm -hmm. is uh, working with some publishing house or something. Mm -hmm. So he asked me to uh, to send him some mm -hmm. chapter so that mm -hmm. he could sort of evaluate it. Mm -hmm. And he, in turn, gave it to a few more friends of mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. uh, to, to sort of say what they think about it. And one of the responses, which was pretty shocking, mm -hmm. was that, isn't the writer from India? How come she is not writing about caste? Oh, you know yeah. that kind of uh, right. that kind of right. attitude, trying mm -hmm. to uh, prescribe yeah. what you should write. Mm -hmm. You know, I I won't succumb to that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. In fact, uh, along those same lines, you have published uh, a, a total of nine books now, is it? Uh, yeah, there are different genres okay. actually. Can you just briefly talk uh, about uh, what kind of books they are? Okay. My first book was uh, published in 2003, a collection of poems mm -hmm. uh, titled Tin Kim Don in Mizo, mm -hmm. okay. but it's, uh, it contains both English and Mizo poems. Uh, they are uh, not translation, but totally mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. uh, collection. I just put mm -hmm. them together. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the first one. Then uh, after that, we published uh, what's called Fresh Lease, a collection of uh, short stories, mm -hmm. and that's um, you know it's from all over India actually. The, they they were placed in all over all right. all in India, and there was just one story from Mizoram, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because at that time I had lived more outside, right. and you know, mm -hmm. so I collect stories mm -hmm. from uh, this thing, and then that came out in two thousand five, I think, and uh, two thousand six. I have a children's fiction mm -hmm. uh, called Amazing Adventures mm -hmm. and then I forgot the order of right, right. no, <laughs> that's, that's fine. I just and then wanted another, you to you yeah. know, uh, share with us the, the, the whole ambit of the okay. kind of writing that so you do. So this is uh, yes. two, children, two, two children's mm -hmm. books, mm -hmm. um, mostly fantasy. Right. Yeah, I still love those actually. Right. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then they have this collection of mm -hmm. uh, short stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got two two collections of short stories mm -hmm. by That's now. Wonderful. One came out uh, mm -hmm. just recently mm -hmm. uh, called Blind Spots. Right, right. Yeah. And then um, yeah, so two two books of poems, mm -hmm. two short stories, two children's books, two narrative non-fiction okay. and one novel. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so how do you see the future, I mean, as a writer, the future of not just uh, yourself as a writer, but uh, Mizo writing in general also? Yeah, Mizo, Mizo writing, I think it is growing. Mm. Uh, but like I said, we need to look a bit wider mm -hmm. and uh, see, um, we shouldn't we shouldn't stay in the box. Mm. Yeah, just because you, you are a Mizo writer living mm. in Mizoram. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's it's good if you can have a good reflection of mm. Mizo life. And I, I find that uh, some of them are uh, taking to fantasy and all that. Also. It's good, it's, mm -hmm. it's growing. Mm -hmm. So I see a good future. And especially the, the younger generation are getting better and better, I think. Mm -hmm as we go on. Mm -hmm. And uh, as for my personal writing, uh, I still have a lot of dreams. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm working on a, 
a collection of poems in Mizo, pure Mizo. <laughs> I want to I want to bring out at least one book which is mm -hmm. uh, fully in Mizo writing, okay. and so I'm working at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it should. Um, yeah, the poems are more or less complete. Some mm. of them, uh, some of them are original Mizo. Some mm. I trans, I have transcreated from my English poems and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm working on that now. And also, um, I'd like to bring out a collection of short stories again. After that, I have mm. a few stories I have to add to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I don't know. Yeah, there are lots of things in my mind, but let's right, see where right. they come yeah. to. We Those wish you two. all the best. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. You know, looking at the wider literary scene, uh, not just Mizo writers, but um, who are the writers who watch out for? Do you do you have any recommendations? Uh, you know, Indian writers or even international writers, Northeast writers. Uh, is there any one particularly that you know you have enjoyed or would like to recommend? Um, I've enjoyed them a lot, and mm -hmm. of late I was reading this Anjum Hassan's that A Day in the Life. Mm -hmm. Oh, she has got so much of skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's a master at mm -hmm. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. she, she so is. yeah, yes. I yeah, there are a lot of writers upcoming. You know, it's interesting that you you bring up Anjum Hassan because uh, she grew up in the Northeast, uh, but she yeah. is not native yeah. to the place in the sense that she is not a Kasi yeah. or whatever, right? So she has this very unique perspective yeah. uh, of being an insider as well as an outsider. Yeah. Do you identify with that? Yeah, I do actually. Mm -hmm. I, I do. Uh, yeah, in, in a certain way coming out mm -hmm. of Mizoram and looking back, mm -hmm. it kind of gives you, can we call it a wider perspective mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. and uh, or at least more yeah, multi-layered so, I guess yeah yeah and you you sort of look back uh, on Mizoram with a little bit of nostalgia mm -hmm. but in another way you can be more objective mm -hmm. also right. in, in certain ways mm -hmm. because when you are right there in the middle of the pond you know you right. you uh, you are just part of it mm -hmm. but when you move out and look back mm -hmm. you know it it sort of gives mm. you a different view. And I think that's very important yeah. to have as a writer. Yeah, I that think objectivity. so. Objectivity. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And right. I feel I can look uh, on my Mizo community with uh, with uh, clearer eyes, shall mm -hmm. I say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. We will be looking forward to reading more of your writings yeah. in the future. Yeah, that's right. so. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Yeah.